back at it again with the black fans. That's right. We are running our mono black, our first ever Innistrad Midnight Hunt deck, out for a test drive. We have four, count them, four copies of Vampire Interloper, fully 10% of our total deck. We also have such hits as Crawl from the Cellar, Eaten Alive, Strom Kirk, Blood Thief, etc. I've been itching to play this. It's been a full weekend since I drafted. Let's see how it goes. We are in, and do we have a Vampire Interloper in our opening hand? Of course we do. We also have a No Way Out, which is a Mind Rot with a Decayed Zombie, a Bane Blade Scoundrel, and a Blood Tithe Collector. This looks pretty good to me. We're going to keep. We are going second, though, which is unfortunate. Opponent played Island, which I do understand to be the best color. Ooh, we drew the dress. Very awkward. That'll have to wait, though. We're going to interlope. So we can make them fully discard three cards now. We're going to go ahead and attack them, because of course we are. That's what we came here to do. I think we're going to wait on the No Way Out until they're a little bit lower on resources. And for now, could duress them. I think that's what I want to do. Let's just go ahead and do it. Okay, so they are blue-white. They have a beloved beggar, a, part a patrician geist, excuse me. There's a 2-2 two -two flying spirit that gives other spirits plus one, plus one. But we're going to take the flare of faith. They play the patrician geist. They hit us for one with a component collector. Uh, we're going to go ahead and attack them. They let us. So now, I think we need to commit something to the board. Let's go ahead and put something on the board with our Bane Blade Scoundrel. Oops. Put a land out there first. Next turn, they'll probably play a land and a spell, and then we can no way out the rest of their hand. They play Triskaidekaphile. This is another rare. Two mana, one, three. No maximum hand size. If they have exactly 13 cards in hand, they win. But the big thing is they can pay four to draw a card. Hmm, which will help them get out of the bind that they're currently in. We're going to attack with our creatures. And then we are going to play a Blood Tithe Collector. Which will discard their remaining card, which is a land. We are now applying quite a bit of pressure. If they want to spend a full four mana a turn to draw a card, that's going to work out pretty well for us, I think. We're going to attack them with our Bane Blade and our Blood Tithe Collector. We could choose to play an Heirloom Mirror, or we could choose to play a No Way Out, or we could do what I think we're going to do and just end the turn and it becomes night and our Bane Blade transforms into a werewolf. It's now a 5-4. They play Covetous Castaway. So they are very much on a big Disturb kick. They flash back their sorcery, so their Patrician Geist is now a 4-4, flying Vigilance for the turn. It's currently 11-7. We're going to play an Heirloom Mirror. Uh, Seth famously hates this card, uh, but we're going to activate it. We pay one, pay a life, discard a card, which will let us draw a card, mill a card, and put a ritual counter on the mirror. We draw another vampire interloper. Sounds good. And no attacks this turn. Our opponent has definitely gummed things up. They activate Triskadeka file. If we could draw a removal spell and get rid of this patrician geist, we would be most of the way to winning the game. Hopefully our heirloom mirror is going to help us with that. They thought about attacking with Patrician Geist, but they realized that they no longer have Vigilance, so that would leave them very wide open to a counterattack. We got a Bat Whisperer. Hmm. We're going to no way out them first. I guess if we're going to activate our mirror, we should do that, see what our options are. 
going to discard a crawl from the seller for value since we can flash it back later if we want to. Let's see, they're at seven. Kinda wanna get rid of their cards in hand. Let's do that. I love how it makes you target your opponent when you only have the one. It's a tiny tilt for today. Huh. Interesting. So they did discard a Gavany Trapper, which I'm happy they don't have, but they also returned to hand with a Geist Wave Art Heirloom Mirror, which I would have chosen for them to pick. So yeah. No attacks. Uh, hell, let's recast the mirror. I don't see why not. It's now 9 to 7. We have quite the cadre of creatures here. Many of them are flyers. So we could attack right now with a 3-4 flyer and 2-2-1 two, two, flyers. And that would push through 4 damage. We have a blood pack to make them lose an extra 2 life. So here's what we're going to do instead, I think. We're going to attack with all of our flyers. See how nervous they feel. They have Stormrider Spirit, a 3-3 Flash Flyer. It's very unfortunate for us. They just drew that, obviously. They chose to take three from the Blood Tithe Collector. So we're going to play a Bat Whisperer to get another 1-1 one, one Flying Creature. And we're going to end the turn. I'm worried that they are going to lethal us this turn. So they didn't go for it. Let's go ahead and heirloom mirror. Now well, we'll see. On their turn, they have three huge flyers that are going to end us. They have enough to block everything we're throwing at them. We need to get through two damage. I think we have to go for a Hail Mary, though. Because they are about to kill us. So we're going to attack all and see if they want to block everything. I guess I'm a little bit surprised that they chose to block absolutely everything. So let's see. Let's start by using our heirloom mirror just so we can see if we get an extra option we got a swamp so we can use our blood pact to make them lose two life and then they'll be left at one and then they'll kill us on the backswing well so we lose ah oh, we were very very close on that i'm not sure if that hail mary was right i mean they had so many huge flyers being boosted by their patrician geist that it felt like it was inevitable that we would lose if we just sat there for longer. Hmm, one loss. Okay, let's bounce back in round two after a quick break. Near the small village of Hearts Crest lies an idyllic hollow abundant with flowers and berry bushes. The Warren of Petal Grove is vast and expansive. Hundreds of generations have hopped around its many twisting tunnels. Stories say that this warren has been here since Loam's creation, and all rabbits who inhabit the continent today descended from them. Humans and other various predators come to hunt for rabbits every now and then, nothing out of the ordinary, and until recently, the rabbits of Petal Grove have lived in relative peace. Hello, I'm Amber, the GM of The Warren of Petal Grove. The Warren is a game about intelligent rabbits trying to make the best of a world filled with hazards, predators, and worst of all, other rabbits. I really love the idea of having a game and setting where I plus players could tell several short stories. So I recruited 12 players to play in three different mini stories, all set inside the same warren. Sessions are aired live on twitch.tv forward slash Geekspective. You can find the VODs on Geekspective's YouTube, and you can find the show wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go to geekspective.com for more information. The lack of removal in game one was a big problem, and even so, we were pretty damn close to winning that game. 
I've got high hopes here. I know we're capable of some pretty explosive hands. Uh, for example, this hand, we're going first. We have two vampire interlopers followed by a bane blade scoundrel and then a blood pack to refresh our hand. Sounds good to me. Swamp go. Opponent, forest. Followed by a silver bolt. This is an artifact for three mana. You can sacrifice it to do three damage to a creature. And as you might expect, it's super effective against werewolves, just kills them. We, however, are going to play a vampire interloper and try to get some damage in. Ooh, we draw a dire graph horde. That'll be a good follow-up. Hit for two. They're at 18. Play another land. Play another interloper. I mean, that's a scary start to go up against. The worst thing we could see right now is some dorky reach creature but they don't do that great okay let's attack with our interlopers they bolt one of them of course and then do two more damage it's 20 to 16 we didn't draw a land so we're gonna have to blood pact right now to try to hit our land drop <laughs> we miss so we've drawn one, two, three, four cards and haven't seen a land. It's unfortunate. They play a Gavany Silversmith, uh, which comes in as a three, four, fine. We're gonna keep attacking. We did draw a land. So now we're gonna start dropping Baneblade Scoundrels each turn. Opponents getting aggressive attacking us with their Silversmith. I mean, go crazy, pal. Okay. They played Howl of the Hunt. It gets plus two, plus two, and Vigilance. So they're trying to ambush us there. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it's 13 to 14, but we're attacking with all our creatures. They chump block the four damage. They take two. It's 13 to 12. Um, we could... We've got a number of things we could do. I think we're just going to start by dressing them, or do we want to apply more pressure? Let's apply more pressure here. Drop another Baneblade Scoundrel. We have an Infernal Grasp now, which can kill their Gavany Silversmith. Okay, so they attack us with their Silversmith. It's 8 to 12. But now we can grasp them attack with everything put them down to two and then to rest them just to make sure we're not going to die to some cheeky combat trick they have two blockers and a consuming blob I mean, we are really not afraid of these things so unless they draw something here they're dead they animate a stuffed bear. It's a 4-4. I mean, if they have a combat trick, they're probably going to kill us. They don't. They're dead. All right. Our first victory in Innistrad, Midnight Hunt. Good. I, I know from listening to LR that stuffed bear is one of those, when your opponent plays it, you really need to defeat it kind of cards. And we did. Whew. Pressure's off. On to game three. We are one and one. Okay. Yeah, another interloper hand. We keep. I mean, interloper is great. Getting it in your opening hand is better. Getting to play first is best. Opponents on the island plan. Spooky. If they're blue, black, or blue, white, that's very scary. If they're blue, anything else, we would feel a lot better. They are blue, white. Well, we'll see. Okay, so we're going to attack with our interloper, of course. Get it for two damage, and then we don't have anything else to do, so we're going to no way out right now and use up our mana. They discard two cards. We get a 2-2 two -two Decayed Zombie. I haven't got to use them much yet, but Decayed Zombies are zombie er, they are tokens that, after they attack, they get sacrificed. 
Opponent ditched a Drownyard, a Malcolm, and a Stormrider Spirit. Oof. They lost some juice. We love that. Next, okay, we attack with our Interloper. Good. We then cast a Bat Whisperer, and since our opponent lost life, we get a 1-1 Flying Bat. It's 20 to 16. This is what I like. So the component collector was an all-star in the first game uh, for our opponent. It's a 1-4. Uh, it makes it day as it comes into play, if it wasn't already. And whenever the day-night cycle switches, you get to tap or untap a permanent. Now they play Ritual Guardian, a 3-2, as Coven, and if you activate the Coven, it gets lifelink. But only on your turn. I mean, we don't mind that, I don't think. Let's go ahead and attack. Do we want to attack with our Bat Whisperer? I think yes. If our opponent wants to give away either their component collector, I see. That's interesting. So they used Fading Hope to return our Bat Whisperer to hand. But all that means now is that we get to recast it and get another bat. So it's now 20 to 13 and we've got three flyers in play. Well, we'll see if it's enough. They cast Devoted, or excuse me, Devoted Graft Keeper. It's a 2-1. Uh, they mill two cards. And when they cast a spell from the graveyard, they tap a creature. They also cast Lunark Veteran, uh, which is like a soul sister. And now they're attacking us. They can attack us all they want. <laughs> we do not care about that. And they concede. <laughs> good, 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 good. I was going to say, that, that attack was a sign of real desperation. Got it. Remember winning? Remember when this series started and we won games? I'm feeling on top of the world right now. We're two and one. I mean, it could all come crumbling down in a second. That's clearly true. But we gotta savor these victories when we get them. Oof. Hot tip from Arena. Express yourself to your opponent by choosing an avatar. Mine's Nicol Bolas. What's yours? Story time. This weekend I got to take part in a murder mystery, which was a lot of fun. And the person running it, I've played in a few with her before. And she has started to typecast me as a sleaze bag. And I don't know how to feel about that. I guess I do know how to feel about it. I feel sleazy. We're going first again. Um... We do not have an interloper, but we do still have a two drop in Vengeful Strangler, so I think we'll keep it. We also have a duress and an eaten alive, so let's open with this duress, see what we can get. Ooh, they have an immolation. One mana target creature gets plus two, minus two, and Moon Ranger Slash, which is a lightning bolt. We'll be taking that. So they're on some sort of red blue kick. All right. I understand red to be very bad, but that doesn't mean you can't build a good deck, even though you're in a bad color. So I don't want to presume that I have the advantage here. We'll play our Vengeful Strangler. 2-1, can't block. When it dies, it comes back transformed as a curse on your opponent that slowly drains them of life. Though it should be noted that that curse um, goes on a creature that they can sacrifice to get rid of the curse. So it's a semi-removal spell. Okay. But they just use their emulation to get rid of it. That's fine. Um, okay, so... We drew a land. We're on three lands right now. We have no other plays. But we do have a Blood Pact, which is an instant, so we're gonna let them take their turn, and then we'll draw some cards. Go from there. They play Overwhelmed Archivist. 3-2. Loots when it comes into play. And you can disturb it as a 2-1 that loots on attack. It's quite a good card. Let's go ahead and Blood Pact. So we lose two life, we get two cards, we get some much needed lands. It's our turn. We have to 
Quailing and Pass. We've got some big five drops. We've got Diagraph Horde, the Poor Man's Grave Titan, and we have Blood Tithe Collector. So, I mean, we've got good stuff coming up. Opponent plays a Swamp. Oh, our opponent is brewing with a Grixis deck. I love it. They play a Fang Blade Eviscerator. Ooh, I'm sorry, that's what it transforms into. A Fang Blade Brigand. 3 4, you can pay 2 to give it plus 1, plus 0, and first strike until end of turn. Seems quite good. Uh, we're going to play our Dire Graph Horde. 3 4, get a couple decayed zombies, and then we're going to exile some cards from their graveyard. Why not? That is a lot of action on a common. It really is ridiculous. Okay, so they're attacking us with their 3-4 and their 3-2. I feel like we're on the back foot enough. We can't afford to play around their combat tricks. So we're going to block the Archivist with the idea that they're trying to disturb it into a flyer. Yeah, looks like that's what they're trying to do. They play Famished Foragers. Wow, pop off opponent. It's a 4-3. It added 3 red mana, which then they used to play Voldar and Ambusher, which deals X damage to target creature, where X is the number of vampires you control. That gives it the 1 extra damage to kill our, our Diagraph Horde. Wow. And we're going to attack with our Decayed Zombies. Not surprisingly, they don't block. They're just going to take some damage. And that enables us to get Bloodthirst going, so we play our Blood Tithe Collector. They discard a card. Ditching a Mounted Dread Knight. Good. They're attacking with everything. Um, we're going to try to eat this full darn Ambusher. Looks like we're successful. We did still take a lot of damage, so we're at 5. And then they play a Mounted Dread Knight. Normally it's a... 5-4 Trample, but if you have Bloodthirst, it becomes a 6-5. I mean, we're looking pretty dead right now. Especially because they still have this Disturbed 2-1 Flyer waiting in the wings. They attack with everything. Uh, do we just die here? I think so. We can block each of the non-Tramplers, in which take we take in which case we take six trample damage and die or we could block up to four of the trample damage take two from that block another four i guess we don't literally die they can activate their foragers give it first strike ah that gives them the extra point of damage yep so there was no way out of that for us Fair enough. Like I said, I wasn't about to underestimate them just because they're in the quote-unquote weakest color. Alright, two and two. Let's see if we can't get a winning victory here. I'd like to get two more wins. I mean, that's really the, the sweet spot where you've really evened out. Five wins, of course, is where you actually come out ahead, but... Four wins is like 98% of the way there. Oh, our first very bad hand. Four lands, a blade brand, which is a combat trick, an heirloom mirror, which doesn't do anything, and a no way out, which is a mind rot. We're going to have to mulligan. Hand number two, we have a turn one duress and a turn two vampire interloper. So I'm going to keep this. Do we want to keep the dress, though? We should ditch it, shouldn't we? Yeah. As much as I like turn one dress, turn two interloper, dress is so low impact that I really don't feel bad about ditching it. Opponent goes mountain. Have we been lied to? Is red actually fine? Okay, so they're playing obsessive astronomer. It makes it day. And then whenever it switches, you discard up to two cards and draw that many cards. Weird. What a weirdo. Well, let's try to smack him down with some interlopers. 
So they hit us for two. And then they didn't cast anything, so it does become night. They ditch some cards. They draw some cards. I mean, all of this is fine. Nothing too crazy going on so far. Next turn, we can see if we want to play a blade... A Bane Blade Scoundrel, oh, Tongue Twister, or a Bat Whisperer. Okay, so they're continuing to hit us with their Obsessive Astronomer. They play a Falcon Abomination, very good card. 2-2 two -two Flyer that makes a Decayed Zombie. See, now they're getting somewhere. Do we want to attack with our Interloper? Mm. I mean, I said, I mean, there's no reason not to. You can't block. Okay, they take it. They're, they're currently winning the race on board. It's 16 to 16. Let's go ahead and cast a Bat Whisperer. So 4-2 makes a 1-1 one, one flyer. You just need some board presence. Okay, so they're coming at us with a Decayed Zombie for no value. It's fine. It's 12 to 16 now. And they play a Brimstone Vandal, a Devil, 2-3 Menace. Whenever day and night switches, it deals a damage to us. So they're like on a day night switcherino plan. I don't know. <laughs> Let's attack them with everything. Okay, they're trading our Whisperer with their Astronomer. It's now 12 to 13. We're going to go Bane Blade. It's a race. They have a 2-2 flyer and a 2-3 menace. We have a 2-1 flyer that can't block a 1-1 flyer. And currently a 5-4 werewolf with flanking, essentially. Should be noted, too, that when our Bane Blade is on its werewolf side, it makes it so that if a creature that is blocking it dies, they still lose a life. They played Reckless Stormseeker, which is a 2-3 that gives a creature plus 1, plus 0 in haste. At the beginning of combat, and it flips into a 3-4 that gives plus 2, plus 0, and trample in haste until end of combat. I mean, it's very threatening, certainly. They're at 13, huh? Let's start by playing our land. Trample in haste. So, as things currently stand, they can give their menace creature plus 2, plus 0, and trample, or their flyer plus 2, plus 0, and trample. Um... Maybe we let them do that. Maybe we let them do that. Let's play another Vampire Interloper past the next turn, and then we can get their ass with a Blade Brand. They put the plus two, plus zero, and trample on the Brimstone Vandal, which I think is a really bad idea, unless they've got, maybe they've got some crazy trick. I mean, we'll see if they do. Again, we're on the back foot. We really can't afford to play around like this. They, they don't have a trick, so we traded one for one, and they got two damage through. They play another Brimstone Vandal. So, I mean, that's, that's good. Especially because it's going to push through some extra damage. I think we have to play a Diagraph Horde. Um, get rid of some of their nonsense. And then attack with both our interlopers. So it's four to nine right now. Once again, they're giving plus two, plus zero, oh, and trample. This time to their flyer. That makes sense. Mm, it looks like we're dead. Yeah, we're dead. So they're going to trample over us with their flyer, and then they're going to have extra damage from the Brimstone Vandal. So we are dead. GG. WP. Thus endeth our first foray into Innistrad Midnight Hunt. You know, we got, we got some wins there. Um, I definitely liked having a mono-colored deck. That was fun. I, I want to win more. I can't lie to you. I've not been enjoying getting defeated time after time. So the next time I see you, I'm going to be tryharding. 
which I don't know how well that goes with the ASMR low-key ethos we're looking for here, but I'm going to make it work. I think that's going to help me stay calm, but I am going to try to win. The next time I see you, I vow this much. I will go five wins. I'm going five wins next time. But I'm also not going to lie to you. If I don't, I will still be posting it because I cannot be bothered to throw away decent content. Well, thanks for joining me. Thanks as always. I hope you are sleeping well, unless you're driving, in which case I hope you're sleeping incredibly poorly. See you next time. Bye-bye.